Welcome to my YouTube channel Craft of Death. Today I want to show you my new base for the monster Antelope, which is part of the board game Kingdom Death Monster. For this one I took a completely different approach and I will use this video to show you how I assembled the whole miniature and how it turned out to look like this. I hope you like the video, I hope you like the base, <laughs> have fun with it and let's get it going. So first of all I want to talk about this different approach I had in mind. So if we look at um, other miniature bases I did, like this um, base for the butcher, um, you will see that it is a one part model. I just printed it out, um, glued the original monster to it and the thing was completely finished. But for this one I wanted to make something different because I wanted to have more detail. So I decided to split the whole model into different parts, print them separately and afterwards glue it to the model and glue the base together. This has some major opportunities like really incorporating parts of the 3D print into the model. As you can see here I printed some hands and these hands I modeled after the original sculpt for the antelope from the board game and now I can just um, yeah, incorporate it to the monster. I did this because I wanted the original monster to be even more detailed and have some of its traits that come uh, in the game with cards incorporated. So yeah, you can see these are the hands and the leg of the woman that is to be devoured by the monster or spit out <laughs> as you would like it. So um, yeah, um, you can see here um, the part where I decided to split the model and I will just get um, the other part of the base. So this is the main part and yeah, it's a bit difficult to see when it's printed out clear um, but there is like a edge at the hip of the woman and I decided to split the model there so it would come like a more natural um, cut within the model. So I will quickly try to show you how it is um, set together. <laughs> I hope you can see it but yeah, yes again, here you can see um, that it fits just perfectly. Yeah, these modern printers, they are just fantastic. They are um, so accurate and it's just no problem to split this model. And afterwards, of course, you have to glue it together with, um, with um, some um, normal fast glue and not with um, the plastic glue um, you might usually use for the models. But yeah, those don't work with um, the resin. So um, you have to take normal glue. Yeah, um, here I got some acanthus plants. Yeah, I decided um, to um, overhaul the complete um, visual of, the, of these acanthus plants. There are some um, printable versions out there on the internet. I think they look all really, really great. But yeah, just for um, my visual um, um, goal, <laughs> yeah, my visual goal, I did decided to go a bit differently. So yeah, you might say um, they don't look like the acanthus plants on the um, on the punch out boards, but mm, yeah, I like them this way. <laughs> so yeah, so let's get on, and I now will show you um, how I put together this top part of the model. You can see I used some green stuff um, to um, make the model seamless. Um, this green stuff is. Um, a really really great product. Um, it's a two component product um, of green and white. Um, you smash it, you mash it together and it will be really really formable. And um, yeah I use this stuff a lot. It's really really great and it's just perfect for these kind of situations. I have like some special tools and I will also use this liquid green stuff it's called. Um, when you buy it, it comes in a very, very liquid state. And I um, found out that it is not that well, it's not that usable 
in this liquid state. So <laughs> I just left um, the cap of um, the liquid green stuff open um, to um, yeah, drain out some of this liquid. And yeah, now it's more solid. And you can see that I can um, use it in a similar way um, to the um, normal green stuff. But um, the main difference to this is that it's still more soft than the, um, the usual green, um, green stuff. And it is um, better suited um, to make seamless edges. You can see that I um, put some at a, at a place um, where I still have some holes and I just use um, a, a bit of water and I will now try to brush um, this, um, this more hardened liquid green stuff um, so I can get a seamless and very, very flat connection uh, between the model and the printed out stuff. Yeah, it just takes some while and of course um, you could just use um, the green stuff and go in afterwards um, with some tools to flatten it all down. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty lazy in, the, in, the, in this case and I just um, want to have a fast approach to the whole thing. And you can see I um, use the green stuff or this liquid green stuff to have a nice connection for the hands. And I also formed some teeth and yeah, just some detail right at the edge so it doesn't um, show that um, this wasn't part of the model originally. So here you can see the assembled model. I put on the acanthus plants, I put on some green stuff. I also um, used some green stuff on the feet of the antelope. You can see I put some of it at the bottom because it yeah, the model wasn't um, quite high enough, so I had to do a little of, a little bit of work. But yes, again, if you put a bit more time into um, dry fitting the model and to really look that everything fits together, it is um, of course possible um, to use the model as it is. Yes, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. And next up, I will um, do some painting and yeah, of course, I will show you what I did exactly. First of all, I used a Vallejo primer, um, the black one, and also some liquid green stuff. I went back and forth between the two, so until all the edges disappeared. And afterwards, I did a, um, a, a bit of airbrushing, a mixture of these two P3 colors, uh, 4 to 1. I start at a very horizontal angle, and the further I go up the model, I will lighten um, the, um, the whole color with um, these two colors and just increase the angle. So um, I get a nice gradient. And the further top I go to the model, the lighter the color will be. Afterwards, I use some shades, um, Narn Oil and Agrax Earthshade. And I used it very sparely, so I just got into the cracks and at the last stage I used um, these two colors um, to um, just um, give some highlights um, to, um, to most of um, the edges of the base. So of course I could talk a lot more about the painting process but again I'm not really sure if um, you're interested in it because um, most of you I think will paint the model in color and yeah, I just like um, the way the models looked in the original Kickstarter campaign when they were shown with the stone um, optic and that's why I decided to um, yeah, have these kind of coloring <laughs> or not coloring <laughs> for my whole Kingdom Death set. I hope you enjoyed this video and of course that you like the base. And yes, I wish you a great day and yeah, until next time.